Well, today, Governor Newsom orders only Orange County beaches will need to close following this past weekend's overcrowded beaches. Everybody saw the photos, of course. Now, while he says San Diego has been a model of what we're supposed to do, lots of folks want to know what if he does this to our county and our county is next. So joining me now is our attorney and KUSI contributor Vic Bajaj to discuss the legal options counties can take when facing an order like this from the state. Vic, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Oh, my pleasure. Great speaking with you. Thank you. You know, there's a lot of back and forth. There's a lot of confusion. It seems like there's a lot of mi mixed messages as well. But from a legal standpoint, when the governor makes an order like this, I mean, the original one was to close uh, that we got last night was to close all beaches and parks in all counties. What recourse do local uh, city officials or even residents have at that point? Well, the, the best recourse, the one that will bear the most fruit, would be a visit to the federal court. And we've seen lawsuits in the Central District of California waged on behalf of many small business owners that have now been put out of business because they don't fall within the essential businesses category. We've seen those lawsuits in federal court as late and recent as this week being filed. Uh, with the court to say, hey, governor, you just can't issue an order this broad without some specific justification. Now, if we look at what they have in their pocket, the plaintiffs in that case, they have a very strong Fifth Amendment claim that the government is taking property ability to earn, i.e. money. So that's a stronger case than a case where plaintiffs may say, well, our liberties are being constrained. Stronger in the sense of having a federal court grant a preliminary injunction, which says, boy, there's irreparable harm, this harm that cannot be reversed. So we're going to step in right now and stop the governor's actions and laws from going into effect. And that would then have the consequence of guiding local law enforcement officers throughout California to, to not enforce the law. The problem we have if we're addressing your specific question about access to the beaches or parks or national museums or monuments in California is we don't have a taking. We don't have our property being taken. Now, that may only be relevant insofar as the push for a preliminary emergency order to stop the governor's actions from going into effect, uh, but it may not stop the federal court from saying it is still a violation of our constitutional rights. So the recourse, to answer your question directly, would be a visit to our local federal court. We've had some recent decisions through our federal court here, which have stood very closely to constitutional principles to adhere to our constitutional rights. So one would believe that our federal courts now in California moving more towards the side of originalism and reading the context of the Constitution would be hard-pressed not to recognize a constitutional violation given the breadth and vagueness of this order. Of course, perhaps short of an emergency preliminary hearing to stop the act from taking effect. Yeah, because we're certainly in uh, uncharted waters on both sides of the coin here. We've seen some of the freedom rallies take place, and now there's orders, there's uh, charges being filed against those folks. So, um, I mean, are, is this kind of case law going to be written as we go? I believe it will. I believe um, we've never had a COVID-19. We've never had the lack of data and perhaps the proliferation of another category of data regarding a virus uh, in such quick lockstep reaching and resulting in a constraint on our constitutional rights. Now, let's not forget for our listeners and our viewers, when the government constrains the constitutional right. That means our right to free speech or our right to assemble and hang out with who we want to hang out with and not be incarcerated, for instance. There has to be a compelling interest. And we would be hard-pressed to believe that coronavirus is not a compelling health interest. But the most important additional requirement, Ginger, is that you have to have a narrow tailoring of the restriction. 
So a federal court would be presented with the duty to say, I understand there's a compelling right to ensure the safety and health of our citizens of California, but is the governor's vague and very uh, overdressed or over broad law adequately narrowly tailored to address the issue? And this is the meat and potatoes of the issue. Now you will see in quick order a number of federal lawsuits being filed, which will then ask the federal courts to have open hearings where expert witnesses and data can be presented to the court making the decision. It, it won't be what we are now. Right now we're in a position of a reactionary coronavirus has taken over the world. Governors around the, the union have said you can't go out of your house and we're going to restrict those liberties. Now the issue, now that the restriction is in place, will be a judge indicating whether the data, the actual facts, can result in individuals being prohibited from walking the beach at the public park that they pay taxes to yeah, maintain. I think we're, we're just or getting, whether it's, you know, six feet or so. Yeah, I think we're just starting to scratch the surface on this topic. So, Vic, we're going to have to have you back so we can cover some more because, as we're seeing every day, situations are changing. So be well. Look forward to talking to you again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Likewise.